Hi, and welcome to another post of this uh, Land Rover 101, of which uh, me and my son are on with. Uh, my last post in what was the exhaust system, which I'd finished building, and I said that I was going to paint it. Uh, that being because it's mild steel, or most of it is anyway. Uh, so that's what we've done. So there we go. So all the mild steel pipes are painted uh, heat resistant. Uh, satin, well they said it was satin but satin matte, it'll go matte bit time it's got hot and dirty but it doesn't matter, it protects it from the rust so that's it and you can see my X pipe there as well that's painted um, so we've done those, uh, the silencers are over there and the flexes they were all stainless so they didn't need doing, now I'd, I did take them to, a, to shot blast them so I could go to get a good etch so that the paint will key to it better. So I did that with all the uh, mild steel. I also took the main uh, manifold runners and I put it in the aqua blast and I don't know if you'll be able to see it clearly, but uh, I aqua blasted it to see how it would go. And to be honest with you, I wasn't really impressed. So I, I just stopped doing it really. It looked too milky white. I don't know if that's, uh... so anyway, so what I'll do, I've got some pickling paste for stainless steel after it's being welded, so I'm going to try some pickling paste on it and see if that just cleans and gets it looking more even. So that's what I've done with that, so that's the exhaust done. Um, I've started doing the framework, so the, I'll show you what, I t I'll show you the model, because uh, I've started doing the model again. Um, so I'll show you the model, uh, and you'll be able to see roughly what it looks like, the body, the shape of the body. So these pieces which I've made are for the main pillars, and I'll show you the pillars in a second. But these stand at the top, so just as the front, it's got like a kind of hat that comes up and out, as it were. Well, the, the, the form followed on along the side. I didn't want to just take the panel straight up. Um, so the panel, as the side of the Land Rover comes up, you'll, you'll all know that it's straight and then it's got a tumble home where it comes in slightly. And I wanted to carry that on from the cab. I didn't want it to run perfectly straight all the way down like, you, like the ambulances. Uh, and I believe looking at the pictures, the electric bodies do come in as well. Uh, so I wanted to I wanted to retain that that line that swage line that comes down outside at Land Rover, but I wanted to kick it out a little bit at the top. Uh, want to give it a bit of height because I'm putting a bit more height in at the top. I probably I think I think it's roughly about a foot I'm putting in above its original height of which the Land Rover had. Um, so I've stepped it back out and before it comes to the roof, and that is the form. So that way around. So that's obviously vertical and here the roof pillar, uh, roof uh, bar will come straight across to the other side. That's a pillar that comes down there. So I've made six of these, three for each side and they'll be joined up. So I'll show you now a better angle of the pillars I've put in and this, the set I've put in and how I've done that. Oh, and how did I make those? Well, I drew it out on my bench, the actual profiles, and then I cut some steel pieces. And so I've got all the mitre angles preset because I don't have a mitre saw to cut steel here. That's one of the things I'm lacking, so I got all these all lettered up. You can see, and that gave them a form, and then I made one, and then I matched every other one which I made to that one. So. One of them, my first one was a template for every other one, so every one of these are all identical. And it was the same when I made the pillars for the side, I made one, and then I fastened the others to it to make sure that when I welded it together, they retained the same angle. So anyway, let's have a quick look at what we've got on the side. Right, so <coughs> the pillars which I've put in, I've put three pillars in, uh, which they're roughly about equally spaced. I've not, I've not exactly measured them to, cop, uh, to see exactly if it's dead equal, but two are on the wheel box, and the other one is on the pillar, which fits up against the battery box here. So there's three. 
uh, which I, I felt was more than enough to build a body, especially because it's steel. So, like I, like I said, I followed the angle of the body here. So as it comes up there, then it tucks in. So I call that tumble home, um, which comes, it's a naval thing for uh, old warships, sail, uh, sailing men of war. Uh, but anyway, so it comes in here and then like you can see, it's cranked out. So to make sure that they're all running in line with each other, um, I made a frame to sit them on and then I set this one up in the back. I hadn't put these on to start with, it probably would be advantageous but I wanted to just make sure that everything was pulling in line as I fitted it on more than anything else. Um, but anyway, so I put that on, set it with the rope from the main swage line at, uh, as my, my bit that sits on top of the cab which was to there and then everyone was matched for positioning in and out from that line when I'd squared that up and obviously then I cut the height it would tell me exactly where the height was to cut it so I could put these tops on because that was a concern as well that if it, everything wasn't exactly where I wanted it I could be messing around <coughs> because like I say I've got this, this crank here and that has to be equal as well so I felt it was just easy to do that, so you can see I've got it set in. Um, I'll do the other side, and then uh, I'll put the roof bars in, roof bars across, and they'll square all that up. And same with the top here, I'll join them at the top to make sure that it's sort of like all boxed in. Uh, and then I've just got the actual rear door frame to make, and then that'll be all tying all this up here. So, I haven't got on my drawing yet for the model, but the wheels, the spare wheels are gonna go in here, and they're gonna be on the hinge point here, so they will come out and down to there. So you literally, the wheel will be here, and you'll be able to work on the wheel if you need to do. Um, and also, when it's lifted back into position here, it means that it's locked in, so, literally, you can't steal the wheel unless you're going to start hacking away at a load of stuff because it will be fastened in properly uh, from inside. There'll be a lock on the inside to make sure that it can't be stolen. So, you'd have to literally get into the vehicle to take the wheels off because the things are not cheap. Uh, and having all these things, people are quite happy to come along and steal the stuff. So, anyway, so they're going to come out here. They'll be partly stuck out, not totally because. I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with the um, 9x16s or if I'm going to go for a 205-116. And I've seen some wider ones, people are putting wider tyres on. But uh, it, I don't like putting two wider tyres on, nine rims. It's, it, like I said, this, the walls of the tyres are like that and I don't want, I'm thinking that's not a good way to go. I was thinking of having the rims banded, but I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, not, I'm not totally sold on how big the wheels are but obviously that'll dictate of how much this thing sticks in and out but there will be some some stick out but not a lot and a bit stuck on inside but I don't want to lose a lot of space on inside by having it running flush here but it's so there will be a bit out so yeah that's where we are with this at the moment um, I will be obviously putting the exhaust back on oh I said I'd get some clamps I'll show you my clamps quickly So, these are the clamps that I got, which um, they're just straps with a M6 bolt. They're a heavy duty pulling strap. Um, they use for all haul sorts, but uh, it did say that I use them on exhaust, and I have tried uh, one of them to clamp this onto a pipe, and it does, it clamps it up quite happily. So, that's what we wanted. So. I got all these to join it all together. It's better than the U-bolts. The U-bolts are untidy, really. They work perfectly fine, but I just wanted to make it look a bit more, uh, a bit more tidy. And they were quite cheap. eBay. I'm an eBay man. Everything comes off eBay for me. So that's how it's all joined together. Those. So anyway, that's where we are with this. It's just short. Um, yeah. 
it's just getting time, putting it in, and so I say some things just don't turn around really quick. I like the Jag, it's, it's so slow, some of the stuff I'm trying to do, and try to keep these videos going. Um, it's quite difficult every week. I, I thought it'd be easier, but because you can only get so much time and so much time to do a video, you can't, I can't really put a lot in a content together by working and trying to do the video, because I only have Saturdays with my son that actually put this stuff together, so it becomes quite difficult. If I had somebody with me all the time and I was working, they said we could do stuff throughout the day, every day, and I could put a really, really, what I would call better videos together, but I don't have that luxury. So anyway, so I hope you're enjoying what you are seeing and it's, you know, it's informative um, and helpful and encouraging because it's, it's one of the things I like is when people making positive comments and it's encouraging, it keeps you going and yeah, it, it's good all round, it's good all round. Uh, while I'm th remembering, there's a gentleman asking about brakes and I was thinking of doing a thing about brakes for these. Now, when I put the, this brake system to, back together, I didn't really ha have a problem set for my son pressing clutch when he thought it was the brake. But other than that, <laughs> other than that, we, we, we did it perfectly fine. So, but there's a gentleman that's asked me, and I'm sorry I forgot, I forgot your name, I'm absolutely awful with names. But I'm thinking of putting a, a, maybe a video together uh, about how I set it up, because you asked, asked about the uh, low compensating valve on the back. Um, but I thought I might just run through a video for that, but anyway, we'll, we'll see on that one. It's not a guaranteed, but I, I will get in touch with you uh, about what I did, but I might, it'll probably be in a video. Uh, so yeah, and I'm thinking of doing a video as well on the intermediate shaft on the transfer box that I'm uh, gonna machine, but I've got some uh, in a needle bearing race uh, sleeves to go on. Although I did see some come up on eBay, some intermediate shafts, OEM, uh, Shafts never being used. I'm not sure if they've sold, but I was half tempted just to buy those and try and resell them on because every LT95 box must go on that on that uh, intermediate shaft because my two have gone. I bought a spare box uh, from a Range Rover because I bought it for that. Well, I didn't know that was a problem, but I bought it. If there was any problems in the box, then I would be able to swap them around. But both of them out of this one and the Range Rover were wrecked. Uh, so people must, must be suffering from this, this problem with, with rumble. And people keep saying they're in rumble. I'm sure that must be the, the actual thing that's rumble in the intermediate shaft. Anyway, well, the gear on the intermediate shaft. As I promised I would do, uh, or put into a, a video, um, the drawings of uh, the Land Rover, which I've, uh, I'm on with. And so I started off with Blender um, as a platform that I've been uh, trying to get my head around. So I modelled it up in surface modelling, as you can see here. So I inserted some pictures, which I got off uh, Google P Images of people that put up the uh, pictures in different platforms or whatever they've been using. And uh, I just pulled those off. And I brought them into uh, into Blender, and uh, I did. A, I set this to scale, uh, and the reason why I set this to scale was so that I could then start working with it in uh, my CAD software, which I've got. So I'm running Fusion 360 uh, here. Um, so I didn't have it at the time. I was toying up whether I was going to actually. Uh, get Fusion 360. The cost was it was a no-brainer. Fusion 360 is cheap as chips. It cost me 350 quid. Uh, whereas uh, I would have liked to have used Autodesk Inventor Pro, but that's two and a half grand, and I don't have two and a half grand. Not just for a piece of software, which I wouldn't be making any money back from using that software. Uh, so Fusion 360. And, but like I say, Blender's free. It's an open source, brilliant platform. Anybody that's interested in doing uh, surface modeling, kinematics, uh, animation sort of things, and they're doing, starting to do CAD these, it's absolutely a brilliant platform and it's free. 
and there's no stupidities attached to it, which you get sometimes with uh, free software. And it is really powerful, really powerful. I, if anybody's looking at uh, this sort of stuff and they want to dabble, Blender. There's loads of videos on YouTube, the sort of things that you can do with it, loads of people's using it now. So, but anyway, I'm not pushing Blender as a because I'm not asked to, I'm just, I use it because it's there and I want to get to uh, learn surface modeling better. So I put my uh, pictures in, as you can see. Um, I'll put the others on as well and we'll go around so you can see there another picture and go to the back. So there's a back, so you get a picture. So I use these pictures for a reference. You can't always get exactly the way you want the pictures to to line up but you get because you can scale everything that's what I did so I brought them into to get the scale and so I put the scale in the scales one to one uh, it's all measured up in here so I made uh, the model so I did a surface model let me turn these uh, images off so you can see the model that I made it's just a surface model it has nothing more than uh, nodes and so forth to make this up so they're all joined together if I go into edit mode you can start seeing all the points here and I can highlight more but we, there's no need for that so uh, back into object mode so I got the model uh, as you can see there and that's um, to scale uh, and as you can see, the box that I put on the design there. So I wanted to, like, say, go into uh, a CAD pr uh, platform. So I converted this over to an STL file, which they generally use for uh, 3D printing. Uh, I did. I did try to other uh, uh, software uh, models, but uh, I couldn't. Uh, really get it to work with uh, Fusion 360 so it's an STL file which I used uh, so if I'll come out of this one and we'll go into Fusion 360 and so you can see here I uh, brought the file in um, I converted it over so I could actually work with the file I can't remember what I brought it in, what I actually converted it to, because I like to say I'm really trying to get made around um, using Fusion 360, or both platforms really. But uh, yeah, so I brought it in, I converted it so I could work with it, uh, make sure the measurements were correct. I did have to do some some scaling in here. It didn't, it didn't bring it across the way I would have liked it uh, for scale. It was small. It, no, sorry, it was too. No, it was too small. It, it, it gone from millimeters to meters. So I had to rescale it all, even though I set everything to millimeters, both in Blender and in Fusion. But anyway, so I got my scale correct. Uh, I didn't brought the pictures in. There was no need. I only needed the model because I got that. I got every the the scale as I wanted it with the model, and so I just put it one to one. So that when I model to this now, so I reset uh, this, all these mesh, you can see these triangles here, this is how it makes, it converted it over, but the, I can work with these now. So I put, I made faces and I set the faces to uh, one, I think it's one millimeter, I set the thickness of these faces. So all the pieces I'm wishing to work with, I've not done the door in the side here, on the near side, or two doors I'm going to put in here. I've not drawn those yet. I decided I would work, once I've got the faces and everything, I would then set the wheel. So this is supposed to be a wheel. So I wanted to draw uh, an aperture because I've said that I'm setting the wheels into the body slightly. So I don't want them, because they're on the sides, I don't want them stuck out so they're protruding too much. One for I don't want to catch anything with them, uh, but I don't want them too much inside as well. So it's a it's a fifty fifty swing really. Uh, so I was playing with the, the the design shape of the aperture of which the wheels are going to go into. So obviously that's the wheel. 
very basic as you can see but uh, I come up with this form here a, sort of like a circle with a bit in where the actual cradle which is going all the wheels going to go into so I drew that and then I was looking at it and I wasn't quite uh, sure whether I was happy with that uh, so I went and I redrew on the other side another form so we'll turn it round and I drew this form so that's the form that I drew and I've chosen this form other than the, the round one because the Land Rover literally has no round bits on it except the wheels uh, and the headlights and the indicators and so forth so everything's got sharp edges and I felt that it didn't really suit that this round I asked my son and my wife and they both liked it and I said uh, my little apprentice at work uh, what he thought and he preferred this one and I will go along with him I prefer this one so that's what I've been working on so now because I've got all the scale I can I can start making all the bits and pieces to go in it so I'm playing with the idea at the moment of these, these frames it's too small at the moment but I'm playing with the frames and the hinging, I've got to work out the mechanisms for levering this in and out. Um, but it's all scaled. And because I've got all that, I've got proper, obviously proper drawings that uh, can give me everything I require to make these up perfectly. Uh, so that's what I'm on with at the moment. I thought, uh, I said I'd show you the, the model um, as, it, uh, as I got it. Um, and it's like I say, it's uh, it's coming together. And best thing is, it's a proper scale model. That's what I like. That's what I like about this stuff. You get a perfect scale, right down to the millimeter angles and everything. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out when you're actually wanting to build something like this. And like I say, if anybody's out there and they're wanting to do something like this, I I'd, I'd certainly say going to Blender. You can do all this in Blender. Uh, it's just that. I'm more conversant with CAD software than I am Blender, so I thought more comfortable doing it in actually a CAD software, the actual modeling of the parts, um, because you have so many helps within CAD software, whereas in Blender, it's surface modeling, and it's different, and if you get into that, but it's free if you want to get into it it's good for doing this sort of thing and you can work and build models and you've got all the scales in there you can do everything in it it's just that I think it's a bit more entailed in Blender at the moment but they are working on a CAD package within it's going to be incorporated in that so I'd look at it but anyway this is where we are with that so I'll leave, take you back to where we are with the video with the Land Rover anyway all by and by and side and side um, thank you for watching Hope you find the lights here, you're finding them interesting. And uh, just, yeah, hopefully you can, you can keep in, uh, in line with what I'm doing, as it were, and keep watching and uh, let's get this thing uh, continue to be built up and uh, see what it sounds like when I get it going, which uh, hopefully when I get a fuel tank, I can, uh, I can do that. Anyway, you all take it steady and I'll uh, see you on the next post of this Land Rover 101, which uh, me and my son are on with.